guys. Lesson three, um, Gokai Sensho, the five precepts of Reiki. Gokai literally means um, the five principles or precepts. They were important to, they are important to Reiki. They are in English. Um, just for today, I will not anger. Just for today, I will not worry. Just for today, I will be kind to all living creatures, including myself. Just for today, I will be grateful. And just for today, I will work diligently and with purpose. Um, we're going to touch on the meaning of each of those precepts later in the discussion. Now, I'm going to tell you how to say these in Japanese um, because some people prefer or feel more powerful when they're saying them in the original Japanese. For do not anger, it is going to be Kiyoda Kawe. Kawa. Sorry. Kiyoda Kawa. Kiyoda Kawa. Kiyoda Kawa. That is do not anger. Kiyoda Kawa. Kiyoda Kawa. Um, for do not worry. Shenpi Suna. Shenpi Suna. Shenpi Suna. For be kind. Um, that one is kanashate, kanashate, um, for be grateful, it is gyo hagame, gyo hagame, hold on to that O, and we'll get more into that when we get to um, the, uh, the intonations and what, uh, why the emphasis is on certain symbols. And the last one for work diligently, I will work diligently. Um, is hito ni shinsetsu ni hito ni shinsetsu ni hito ni shinsetsu ni anyway like i said some people feel more powerful saying them in english some people feel more powerful saying them in japanese um just do what feels natural to you you also there are different you can do any different variation like i say just for today i will not anger some people will say um different things like just for today I won't get angry just for today. Thou shalt not anger just for today. I will let go of anger. Um, there's no wrong way. Just it's your intention to keep with those five precepts. If you're saying in Japanese, though, do say it correctly because like I said, when we get into that lesson, there is a reason for um, the way that things are said with the words. Plus, I mean, you get people get annoyed when they uh, mispronounce things in our language. So that being said, why are the five precepts important? They're important because they become part of who you are as a Reiki master and how you live your life. Um, you're supposed to honor different things, including yourself. The They're, they're key to Reiki, basically. Um, it's not rather the important, they're vital to the core sense of the sensei system, the teacher system. The secret method of uh, inviting blessings, the spiritual medicine of many illnesses spoken of in the introductory statement, which comes directly from the precepts themselves. Now, these precepts you have to are meant to be said morning and night with your hands held in the gasho um, or prayer position, prayer mudra at your chest. Um, so practice saying that, say three, four, five times a day. Just make sure you do say them. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you say them in Japanese or if you say them in English. What matters is the intention and the energy behind them. The more you say them, the more they become part of you and the easier it is. Now, how do we get these precepts? There is a lot of debate going on with that. Um, some think it was Emperor Meiji, who was the emperor when Usui Mikawa Usui began uh, teaching Reiki. Um, had said, so when it comes to the fir to teaching, first let the student understand that Emperor Meiji's admo admonitions and let them chant the Gokai mornings and evenings and keep them in mind. This is, these are words from Usui, uh, Mikawa Usui. Due to the particular wording used in some translations, um, people thought that the emperor's admonitions were actually the Reiki precepts when, in fact, there, are two, there is a distinction between the two. And similarly, in, um, Isui Sensei is quoted as saying, gratefully, we received the Emperor Meiji's precepts that humanity may discover its proper path. We must live according to these precepts. This has apparently added weight to the erroneous belief that the Reiki precepts and the Emperor's precepts are one and the same. They are not. Um, what are the Emperor's admonitions or precepts mentioned here? Uh, it was called the Kyoki Chokugo. Sorry, that's not 
something I say often. Anyway, or the imperial re-script on education and generally acknowledged to be the most impor important imperial pronouncement on moral education um, through the Meiji era through the end of World War II. So I'm not going to get into all of it. Basically, and then there's another thought, another school of thought that the Reiki precepts come from a set of Buddhist precepts because there are several different sets of Buddhist precepts. Like you'll see several different variations with all basically the same um, meaning of the Reiki precepts. The five that I've given you are the actual Reiki precepts set by Yasui, uh, Mikao Yasui. The 10 precepts for the Buddhists or the Ju Senkai are to admonish the individual to refrain from killing or harming, stealing, lying, sexual misconduct, exaggeration, boasting, flattery, irresponsible speech, slander, fault finding, defamation, hypocrisy, duplicity, greed, miserliness, anger, hatred, holding erroneous views, and losing sight of the truth. Now, admittedly, the first Reiki principle and the ninth are the same. Um, to uh, to refrain from anger. So, but that's about, about where the similarity ends. Other Reiki masters, sorry, I'm cold. Um, other Reiki masters, I'm learning that in Buddhism, there is also a set of five precepts. And in Japan, these are actually referred to as the Gokai. Um, I have claimed that the Reiki Gokai are based on these. I haven't. These people have. However, the Buddhist Gokai are specific admo admonitions against killing, stealing, lying, sexual misconduct, and intoxication. So clearly they're not the same as do not worry, do not anger, be kind. Um, I mean, they can, everything can be kind of like translated into the same. Be grateful, work diligently. You can twist anything how you want it, but they're clearly not the exact same. A direct source uh, for the Reiki Gokai. We think there is... Uh, Usui may have gotten his inspiration from the Reiki Gokai from a book entitled Kensen no Genri, otherwise called Health Principles, written by a Dr. Bizan, B-I-Z-A-N, um, Suzuki, and published in March of 1915. Uh, there may have been an earlier version in December of 1914. Just for today, do not anger others, do not fear, work hard, be honest, and be kind to others. This, rather than the words of the emperor or the various sets of Buddhists, are probably where he started his five precepts. Now, why did he thank the emperor? Well, he thanked the emperor because in this time it was wise to say, hey, so we're not coming up with our own set of things because the emperor just came out with this big, huge moral deal. We're not like saying the emperor is wrong. What we're saying is we want to thank the emperor and we're adding to it for the Reiki principle, um, not so that way you don't like slight the emperor, you know, which would be really freaking dumb, um, you know, men in power. Anyway, so let's get, let's begin discussing the precepts themselves. The first one, do not anger and do not anger others. Anger is a function of our primitive inherent self-preservation mechanisms, the confrontational aspect of what is commonly referred to as the fight or flight response. Um, everybody's heard of the flight or fight response. Any anger triggers a series of hormonal reactions, endocrinal changes intended to ready our body and our senses to um, overt, to have like this physical reaction to a potentially life-threatening thing. When someone becomes angry, the heart rate usually goes up, does, as does their breathing. Um, it also becomes more labored. <clears throat> blood pressure rises, digestive processes are suspended, and blood is drawn away from the liver, stomach, and intestines, and it flows to your central nervous system um, and the muscles. The individual surface temperature rises and they may feel flushed. Uh, you've heard, you know, you get that red hot streak, that red hot anger, it's an actual physical reaction. Their muscles tense, they become agitated, restless, uh, varying, varying degrees hyperactive, uh, may find grinding their teeth, clenching their fists, raise their voices, feel as though they're fit to burst, uh, Incredible Hulk style, kind of somewhat stronger and more full of unnatural energy. This build of attention, if not released, um, will can have serious psychological impact on the body. However, it also seems that letting it out by ranting, raving, punching others, punching pillows, verbally attacking also has a detrimental effect on the body, on the individual's body system, and also on your etheric body. Um, aside from the damage it might cause if you miss like the drywall and hit a stud, I mean, broken hands, not gonna be a good time. So is there an upside to anger? 
Modern psychology would like us to believe that anger isn't all bad. Anger can temporarily give a, an individual a sense of confidence and the motivation to take action um, and attempt to resolve the problem seen to cause the anger. But the anger tends to impede an individual's clarity of thought. So while they may indeed be motivated to take action, the action they're taking is not usually is not always appropriate or uh effective. Admittedly, some people do respect, even admire what they perceive to be righteous anger in others, viewing it as a backbone, as backbone or confidence or determination. Anger can often get you what you want, but you, a lot of times with the cost of alienating others. Um, so then that would go against the, uh, against other things. Anyway, intimidated people may be obliging, but as an old oriental proverb says, winning the heart is the best way. A Buddhist perception of anger. Now remember, um, is Mikawa Asui was a Buddhist monk. So we have to maybe like, I, I hate using the word assume, but we have to assume that at least some of his Buddhist teachings were imbued, were meant to be imbued into the Reiki principles. So the Buddhist perception of anger is if Buddhist thought anger is perceived to be an unskillful mental state and categorized as poison. The concept of righteous anger is contrary to Buddhist belief. Anger is not considered to be justifiable under any circumstances. The poison that is anger causes the individual to lose perspective. They are unable to think clearly. Also, one who acts from anger will most likely trigger an anger response in others. Where anger is seen as poison, an unskillful state of mind, the antidote to anger is seen to be the skillful state of mind that is loving kindness. It is, is it mere coincidence then that the Gokai, the Reiki principle, begins with do not anger and end with be kind to others? Anger can make you sick. The psychological effects of anger. Um, while tensions arriving, rising out of like isolated little short bursts can manifest as headaches, backaches, other aches in your body, um, tinnitus, dizziness hemorrhoids, high blood pressure, digestive disorders, and ulcers. Uh, more intense prolonged bouts of anger can cause more serious problems as well as um, impacting badly on illness and disease from that you may already be suffering from. More, uh, your gallbladder, liver are particularly vulnerable to attacks of anger. During the anger episode, the body increases production of cortisol. Now remember, cortisol is that hormone that you hold in your stomach that also um, increases your chance of heart disease. So, bad time all around. Plus, cortisol held in your stomach area makes you chunky. Um, cardiovascular, there you go. Cardiovascular system also particularly susceptible. Increase in heart rate, rise in blood pressure, constriction of blood vessels, um, including your coronary arteries, thickening of blood, which means your heart has to work harder to circulate it. Chronic exposure to the effects of anger can all ultimately result in the destruction of the heart muscle. All right. So, anger, bad. Anyway, the next one we're going to work on is just for today. Do not worry. Water good. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, here are some people's thoughts on worry. Overcoming fear and worry can be accomplished, accomplished by living a day at a time or even a moment at a time. Your worries will be cut down to nothing. Now, do you worry about stuff as you're doing it? Not generally. Generally, what do we worry about? We worry about the future. We worry about the past, right? So this is kind of where it comes in on that. I mean, you're not going to, you don't walk into a situation worrying about it. Well, I mean, sometimes you do, but not usually. So the man who is always worrying whether or not his soul would be damned generally has a soul that isn't worth a damn. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Anyway. The secret method of inviting blessings, the spiritual medicine of many illnesses just for today, do not worry. I'm not going to get too much into that one because that one is fairly self, self-describing, self I guess, because you're not supposed to worry about it. So, I mean, why are we going to talk about worry? You know, it doesn't do any good. Um, it does mean that you're living either in the past or in the future, which means that through um, self-discipline and doing your Go Kai Sen show twice a day and your Hatsu Reho twice a day um, that will incorporate at least four more meditations in your day which will help you get rid of your worry because when we're grounded we're more present when we're more present we're not in the past we're not in the future so we're not in the worry zone we're here we're living we're doing we're breathing we're 
being. We're not planning. We're not second guessing. We're not regretting. We're not doing any of that. We're not doing any of the worry things. So next principle, just for today, be grateful. Of the five principles, Takata Sensei held gratitude to be the most important. Um, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It turns problems into gifts, failures into successes, um, the unexpected into perfect timing, and mistakes into important events. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. That was said by Melody Beatty. I love that. Um, to educate yourself for the feeling of gratitude means to take nothing for granted, but to always seek out and value the kind that will stand behind the action. Nothing that is done for you is a matter of course. Everything originates in a will for the good, which is directed at you. Train yourself never to put off the word or action for the expression of gratitude. Always be thankful for what you have. Then it does actually become more. And the more gratitude you practice, <clears throat> the more <clears throat> things that will come back to you. I mean, you've heard of karma. Be grateful for, be grateful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there be to look forward to? Be grateful when you don't know something for it gives you an opportunity to learn. Be grateful for the difficult times. During those times, it helps you grow. Everybody has shown that they, almost everybody, I'm sure not everybody, I mean, that's a blanket statement, but everybody has the ability to grow and a lot of people have shown their ability to grow through these last few weeks. Be grateful for your limitations because they give you opportunity for improvement. Um, they definitely do give you opportunity for improvement. Be grateful for each new challenge because it will build your strength and character. Be grateful for your mistakes because it means you've made a difference. It is easy to be grateful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also thankful for their setbacks. If you can't be thankful for what you receive, be thankful for what you escaped. The secret method of inviting blessings, the spiritual medicine of many illnesses just for today. Be grateful. All right. Work hard. That one I feel like is pretty self-explanatory. Um, work diligently. Don't half-ass stuff because that would go against this giving attitude that Reiki masters have. You're supposed to go out there, work diligently, work with purpose, be happy, have a good heart about it. If you don't like your job, change your job. But I bet you that after a week of just doing these principles every twice a day, you'll like your job a little bit more. Um, anyway, just be happy that a beat part of working diligently and with purpose goes back hand in hand with being grateful. Be grateful for what you have. You have a job. Um, be grateful that you have arms that can carry things, legs that can walk, um, lungs that can breathe, eyes that can see. Not everybody has these things. So you should be grateful and then use those things to work diligently and with purpose. Um, be kind to others and be kind to yourself. This I have to, when I do my Gokai, I always say, just for today, I will be kind to others and myself. Because I beat myself up a lot. I'm done. You know, I have a past. I'm not proud of all of my pasts. And there are things I have to forgive myself for that I'm working on. Uh, we should all work on that. Anyway, so be kind to others. When somebody cuts you off in traffic, try to be kind. Don't assume that they're healthy like you. Don't assume that they're going to run, you know, be able just to go run to pick up their curbside groceries right now or go to the chiropractor. We don't know what's going on in their life. Um, they could have found out that their last remaining relative just got sent to the hospital or uh, that somebody they love is overseas and something happened they can get to them. We don't know. Like my point is you don't know why they cut you off. Be kind to them. Um, same thing with when people are grumpy to you and the store. For instance, I had somebody cuss me out the other day because of cheese. I forgot to, I didn't put in enough cheese into their curbside order. So it called back screaming at me about cheese. In my mind, I was like, are you freaking kidding me? But then I had to switch it around. I was like, this guy is upset about something more than cheese. So I was kind to him. Apologized repeatedly. Asked him if he would please come back. 
We get him his cheese, make everything better. He, of course, didn't want to hear any of, any of it. He continued to yell at me and let me know that his wife was going to rip him a new one, which I highly doubt. Anyway, something was going on. So be kind. I could have used that opportunity to be mean and make his life more miserable, but I, I think a little kindness like might have helped temper his temper a little bit, and maybe it helped his health with the anger issue he's currently having. So anyway, but definitely be kind kind because you don't know you don't I mean like some of the happiest people I know are some of the most depressed people I know they smile and they smile and they smile and they do for others and they make everybody else feel better but at the end of the day they just go home and cry so be kind to everybody anyway that is all for lesson number three um I think the next one we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and go through the choku ray kanji I like kanjis all right talk to y'all later thank you